Oh, we don't have to sing. Hi, Evan. Hey, hey, Matt. Hey, JT. Hey, we are in Las Vegas for what is this like our second, third free range American episode? Something Whatever. There. Doesn't matter. Who cares? Just Doesn't matter. matter. We're in Las Vegas at the shot show getting ready to launch into a whole, I don't know, several episodes of, of fun. Friends. Fun. This is going to be fun. Friends. Fun. Friends. Our first guest is Lorenzo Lama. What, Lamas? Is that how you say Lama. it? That's exactly. How is that how you say Very it? Very famous actor. Very exactly. famous <laughs> actor? Yes. No. You're way less Hispanic than I thought you were. <laughs> no, Lorenzo be. Sartini. Lorenzo Sartini. And uh, so. It's Canadian. Yeah. Who all do we have here? Very we got Matt Canadian. Best is on the uh, the episode. Hello, with and us. I'm I'm drinking my fresh greens as you mm. gave me, Evan. Which hey, is, it's I'm not Monday of shot. I know show. I'm not trying to get the shot show plague, dude. dude. Listen, I've had water this week. What? Yes, yes. You, like real water. Yes. with your vodka? I, no, I haven't. I was I was not drinking. Last time he said it was water, it was just distilled vodka. No, and there's no. water in that. I, process, he was I putting I Tito's. I cut out alcohol. No, you didn't. You drank I saw you drinking last, last night. night. Yeah, because you were there. <laughs> I cut out alcohol by myself. <laughs> That's a good first step. Yeah, that is See? a good first step. Yeah, but you're never alone ever. You always invite people over. There's still a step, isn't there? Okay. Arguably, yeah. maybe. Okay. Arguably, <laughs> maybe. Are you? Are do you? Are do you drink at all? Yes. What's your What's your go to? Is it like bourbon, vodka? Uh, whiskey is definitely my favorite. Favorite whiskey. Ever like if your go to screaming eagle screaming eagle yeah. ooh what is I'm that I don't even know what that, that is screaming eagle it's really good really good interesting I know it's a bird is that a Montana yeah no it's uh, uh shit I can't remember where it's out of David so, look it up yeah <laughs> no that would, uh, that Kurt would help. Look it up. Where's Screaming Eagle out, from? We have a Kurt now. Back. Screaming no, Eagle whiskey. Uh, is it a bourbon or a whiskey or a... it's it's a bourbon. Oh, okay, um, but. So my fam- we're big into the bar business as well here in Las Vegas. Right. So we get like a lot of really, really good shit that comes out. Like there's one actually on the way called Screwball Whiskey. Screwball? And it's a peanut butter infused whiskey. What? Tastes phenomenal. And it's it, – so we're – That actually sounds really good. We just got it into our bars just recently. Um, they're out of Southern California and they're kind of stocked up in like Lee's Liquor and stuff. It's fucking Is amazing. there a way we could I mix that with like a shake and have like an alcoholic shake? Is you it like easily a easily pr- could because it doesn't? I mean, it it tastes. I'm just trying like to figure out how I could like eat my ice. dinner and drink it at the same time. So it's like a pre workout or yes. post workout yes. shake: yes. peanut Post-workout, butter, vodka. Peanut, easily do that. Peanut butter, whiskey. That's Thick. you know what we're gonna do after the show. You and I are gonna maybe uh, pancake exchange. batter. <laughs> yes, yeah. <man>. yeah. <laughs> or top five whiskeys because I'm Perfect. like Basil Hayden's one of my top oh, yeah. ones. Good price point. Love I mean, that shit, man. You're a Stranahan's. Stranahan's yes. from yeah, North Carolina. North Carolina. Yes. There it is. There you go. Sorry, it's, it's, it the mountains. We're, we're getting into it. It's awesome. We that's had my a go to for like a nice clean. Really? Yeah, that's my go to. Surprise the ball though, like for a, you know, nightcap or whatever you want to call it, something sweet, something nice at the end of the night. Screwball is fantastic. Boom. Peanut butter. Yeah. Peanut butter. And you wouldn't think there's as much alcohol. Yeah. As you would imagine, but it's actually eighty proof. Which like Whoa. you know you compare that's it to double. Like, yeah, you can play. Well, you compare it to like uh, Jack Daniels for example. They're ninety proof, so it's really only five percent alcohol difference. Right, it's pretty good. Wow, not shabby. Yeah, you know the liquor business then, because you live yeah. here in Vegas, right? Live, it's been yeah. two years since I've been able to talk with you. Yep. I believe I was born and raised here in Vegas. Do you, do you enjoy it? Yes and no. Because I'm an absolute redneck at heart. Like yeah, for sure, to the fullest. Right, went to college in Montana for a reason because I am a redneck. In to, Bozeman uh, or Missoula? Missoula. Wow. Which now, so back when I was in school, Bozeman isn't what it is today. Right, it was a lot. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a, a backwater, more, dude. It was a lot more like ag focused. Yeah, Missoula was kind of like the party scene back when I was going to college. So I know. That's where I went. I went to the University of Idaho, so yeah. like right across the border. So I got I got recruited there to play football and decided not to go. Why? A little fucking name droppy, but whatever. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you know. I was I was D one. I mean, awesome if I would, motherfucker. If I'm gonna be out here, I got to throw out some yeah. good facts about myself, right? That's true. <laughs> you know, I so played I, soccer in high school like a bitch. Soccer. Yeah, I, can't I would believe not it. take you for a soccer. Player. No, you know, I was kind of a pussy growing up. So. I watched a lot of golf. Ew. I'm into golf now. Are you? Oh, I was. Lying. It's so boring. No. I love you, Lance. That's I'm it's so golf. boring though. When you live in Las Vegas, what else is there? I mean, granted, like, yeah, we, you know, go drugs, skydiving, prostitutes, I, skydiving, maybe flying. I'm married now, so my my hobbies have changed <laughs> for sure. Um, but no, I mean, shit. There's really nothing else to do in the Southwest. So Especially you, now. Right you went now, to U of M. How, when did you graduate? 
2010. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. We we got to get a little bit more because we it's been like three years since you've been on yeah, an episode. Yeah. Like, you know, give us your backstory, dude. Like what like what landed you on the chair today? You can give us the Reader's Digest version. That's fine. Just spin uh, everybody up. The <laughs> so I was born and raised in Las Vegas, and you know, there's a part of what landed me into this chair is I'm the nephew to Lorenzo and Frank Fertitta with UFC. I am have my own business now in the hunting uh, industry. My family actually owns the Stratosphere and owns 70 bars here in town. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's, yeah. Right. So Matt, Matt, or uh, sorry, Baker, Baker and I go quite a ways back with the UFC stuff. Gotcha. So with the UFC stuff, Matt and I, or uh, sorry, keep saying that. That's Baker and You I, can keep using my name because right? I want to be part Matt. of the UFC stuff. I but love the UFC. that's a really good compliment to Baker that I keep calling him Matt. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He doesn't so, uh, that. So him and I go back a little bit because he was a hunter. I'm a hunter. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, I'm a redneck at heart. That's kind of all I care about and want to do is hunting and redneck stuff, right? right? Go get in trouble in the country. So Baker and I kind of became friends through – he was with Kill Cliff at yep. the time, I think, right? Yep. So him and I were talking just about hunting and hunting content, what I was doing in the hunting industry, developed a friendship, and then that friendship led to meeting Matt and Black Rifle and – uh Kind of went from there. And your your hunting company is Go Hunt. Go Hunt. Correct. Yeah. And what, what do you guys do there? I know we talked about it a lot last, but you yeah. guys some exciting stuff. Yeah. So essentially, like you look at some of these other industries, and I know you know hunting is kind of <clears throat> thought about as is you know redneck backwoods type stuff, which it kind of is, but really at the core of it, it's pretty sophisticated. There are tons of rules, tons of regulations, tons of things you need to know. All these states have different ways of operating their wildlife and their wildlife management, how to go hunting, where to go hunting, all this crazy shit, right? So what, like, Zillow did to the real estate industry and what, like, uh, Kayak and Travelocity and all those companies did to the travel agency business, yep. that's what we did to hunting. So back previous to us, there was, like, magazines, bullshit magazines right. and state proclamations and things like that. And so we just digitized it and made it filterable, sortable. Since we last talked, new has, how's everything, go, like, the last couple of years in growth? Are you getting more people? Yeah, so when I was on the podcast first there was eight full-time employees right now we're at right. 46 holy Badass, shit dude. congratulations wow. yeah, dude congratulations. how Sweet. many that is phenomenal. can you disclose steps. like how many users or- so yeah, so we have upwards of a half million to a million unique visits a month wow um a very decent majority of those are actually paying users and paying members mm-hmm. and actually interact with the site. Right. And then our membership fee is 150 bucks a year. That gets right. you access. The one thing about hunting that's really good for us and why we're able to, you know, charge a charge a fee for what would be perceived as public data right. is that data changes so much every yeah. year because well, it's an accurate aggregate. I'd imagine where it's just a one stop shop and you're willing exactly. to pay a little bit on top. Exactly, and because it changes so much, people don't want to invest. You know, upwards of. 24 48 hours of research ba- in, yeah. into all these states instead of doing that every single year because the states change changed so much you can't rely on what you knew from the past going into the future because of the change so that's where we come in we save everybody all that time and research and they're willing to pay us a fair fee for it what, what's your your title or at the are you ceo or founder you? and ceo oh yeah. wow yeah big dick in charge I, I so I, I just I, put a lot of really <laughs> smart people in charge that's all you and do. then i just tell them my ideas and then they figure out and that actually kind of segues into a question I would have for you. Growing in that short time, so about two years, going from eight employees to over 40, what were, like, your key hires? Because I think every business, as far as especially specifically on, like, the IT side and what you guys are having to develop the website and then, moreover, getting all the information to be accurate is, like, what were, like, the couple main key hires that you did in that? I would say my first and foremost, I hired um, – a guy named Chris Porter who worked very high up and very closely with the digital aspects of full tilt poker back when online poker was huge. His name's Chris Porter. So he was the first guy I brought in, um, made some other like technology type hires to help build it out and actually right. architect what we saw as going to be a viable business and viable business plan. Um, but the next most important guy probably was Brandon Evans, who actually is based out of Cedar City, Utah. We have a satellite office there. It's pretty hard to find down home hunters in vegas yeah so had to go to utah for him and he's our head of research so he's literally in charge of sifting through all of this state bullshit wow. and, and all the changes that they if make you hired me for that job i'd fucking quit in one day dude like, I, i'm out <laughs> I, i'm like honestly i tell I, I tell him every day like i literally love you 
because you know it's so hard to find a guy who hunts as much as he does is is you know redneck like me but will literally sit down and grind through all this bullshit stuff of data points and changes and all this i mean it's crazy and he does it for all the western states which you know for some backstory western hunting can be categorized as species so the fourth the the four north american sheep bighorn sheep doll sheep uh stone sheep and desert sheep and then elk antelope mule deer that but the easier way to say it is basically the dakota's west is all western hunting Mm -hmm. so for all those states brandon evans goes through all the regulations for every single unit within those all the species all the season dates everything it's crazy i still i go to high fence ranches in texas i'm like that's an odd dad they're like that's an elk you fucking idiot (laughs) like Oh, <laughs> can I kill that giraffe? Yeah. That's a jeep. <laughs> that's a can't sir, this that. is a that's zoo. A no, yeah. you can't. <laughs> you can't pay us to ride that shark. That's not a thing. <laughs> this is not what you think it is. Uh, yeah. Now, have you guided hunts? Uh, I haven't, like, you know, quote unquote, legally guided hunts, like actually for a guiding or an out- outfitting business. But I've definitely taken people hunting that I'm friends with or family friends with. Nothing. So how that works, like I said, there's a lot of nuance to hunting that isn't actually like as is, is redneck or backwoods as you think. And all that stuff is pretty highly um, regulated. So you have to have like guide license and all this shit to take people hunting and actually charge money for it. But if you don't charge money for it, you can take, you know, friends, family, stuff like that. But, yeah, I've taken a lot of people, a lot of shitty people really? and a lot of good people. Dude, I have a wild story. I, my fucking guide. So I went out to this place called Record Buck Ranch. and um, Texas? You know, yeah, Texas. Yeah. It's a high fence, um, but you still had a spot in stock. Killed a stag yeah. out there, which was a very enjoyable time for me. Um, whatever. But the guide and I were walking, and we it was a sheep, or the, I think it was a doll sheep or something. And, Texas doll? Yeah, Texas yeah. doll. And he's like, dude, I think it's dead. I can't tell it's breathing. It was probably 75 yards from us. Yeah. We stalk it all the way up, and then he's... I'm filming him, and he turns around, just grabs it by the horns. They're like, "Oh, it's dead!" And the motherfucker just comes to life, jumps up, and starts wrestling with them. <laughs> so, the, yeah, I have video That's of it. Awesome. So the guy and I, we walked all the way up to the sheep, picked the sheet up, and then he let it go, and it just runs off. And I'm like, I've never seen. And he was blown. That away was a too. sleepy That's sheep. Awesome. It was, so he was I, just sitting in the sun. Must have been sleepy. Old. I think it was like yeah. eight yeah. or nine years old. That's what happens that. when you don't drink water. It was the yeah. Jared Taylor. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> it, was having a, it was having a cat nap. Yeah, Jared loves his cat No, I, have a, I actually have an interesting story that's similar to that. So I went to New Zealand with Chad Mendez and TJ Dillashaw. Like, Who are they? shit, two or three years ago. I'm teasing. <laughs> yeah. right? Two, two um, very big UFC yeah. fighters. Oh, so, gotcha. so I was in New Zealand with them. And a, a lot of the same circumstance, right? New Zealand has actually no natural four-legged animals. So when you're hunting four-legged animals over there, their majority of them are high fenced unless you're after the tarn chamois and the alps uh, and the alps and stuff but like the fallow the goats the the stag all that stuff is high fenced over there not a lot of people know that i didn't know that the red stag over there were high fenced yeah so anything wow. there was nothing there with four legs only thing that was there was you know birds snakes and really snakes. yeah so they had to bring all that over. So they brought huh? it all over. Wow. Yeah. So that's why, why it's does a everybody super go to New interesting. Zealand to go because everybody's like, you gotta go to New Zealand. Well, it's been, it was it so just... long ago that all that shit went over there that like now it's kind of the... are they like part of the natural ecosystem? Yeah. Now they are. for oh, sure. Like okay. sea deer from Japan, they put those right. and that's actually on public land. Um, well, that's what happened in Texas, cool. as you know, with the yeah, with the, the high fences like Axis out where I live now yeah. are like native species, even though they're obviously from. Well, the Audad too. They were they were taken from Africa and put in the Tascadero Canyon. I think it's the Tascapaladero Canyon or Tascadero Canyon up by Amarillo. Yeah, can't ever remember the name, but that's where they transplanted the original Audad sheep into Texas, and they're free range now. So now you have them all through Texas free range, New Mexico free range. Well, some of the ranchers told me I don't know how accurate this is that like a lot of the old storms that would come in, they'd rip apart all the high fences, like the Axis, the Audad would escape run out and then multiply because they they breed so quickly in that yeah. ecosystem and that's how be, they became kind yeah. of that's natural. essentially what happened to the ibex in new mexico no like shit. the florida mountains in new mexico it's the only mountain range in u.s with with ibex God, you, know, more you know i would love the more you know that's what i want to hunt i want to hunt a sheep i just got back sheep from badass lenai no big deal yeah, humble. I wish I, I, wish uh, I was on vacation. This, this, this is got back from the night. Night. Um and uh, I went out on an axis hunt out there, mm-hmm. which was super fun. Um, but it's a very small island. They did the same thing. They introduced it back in the 1800s. Yeah, and they have to go out and kill 
almost every night to keep the population down. Plus, they have guided hunts, and the locals can hunt them. But there's so many out there, it's it's pretty crazy, man. Like, when you're cruising around... Really? There, I thought yeah. they're... Oh, so they're, they're just, like, populating... They, like, breed like hogs. Yeah. They... It's impressive. I was, like, in a field with about 200 of them, right as, like, the sun's coming up. And um, it was it was really impressive just to see that many animals. Did you shoot like, one? Well, I mean, that's a long story. You know? <laughs> yeah. I connected with one for sure. I Here's what you learn about good hunters and bad hunters. Looking for it. When the stories are long, there's a lot of shit in there that happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This one's not that long. I just spent a lot of time looking for it and didn't find it. So I had I had a short window, I had a tight window. Uh, I went out and did some other stuff. It was mainly a family vacation, so I promised my wife I wasn't going to spend the entire time hunting. Yeah. So I was very happy vacation, sweetie. I'll be big on all day. <laughs> See you I'm later. Scared, but you're getting meat for the family. Exactly. You're coming home. With, Not really. You know, as there's like a Four Seasons probably right next to you. <laughs> no, it like, is. We there's like just a Four Seasons there. You're like, right fish. There. Evan's it over sells... there putting fucking face paint on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's, there's a Four Seasons right there that sells Axis. Like, you, oh. you can get an Axis burger anytime you want. <laughs> yeah. Best like, meat in the game, dude. Yeah. Should Fight I realize, meat. before the conversation got derailed, not to derail that one, but with, with in New Zealand with Chad and TJ, oh, to yeah. that goat Please. story, it literally just hit me. So when we were done stag hunting, fallow hunting, and all the, all the big stuff that we wanted to to kill there was these these uh they're called uh some kind of sheep i can't remember these little curled horn sheep and they lived like on this rock hillside kind of adjacent to the lodge we were staying at and every day we'd go back for lunch or dinner and then things would be standing there so of course the two athletes i said if you guys can can stock those literally like a mountain lion because there's no predators over there there's no like i said no four-legged animals right so they're not the smartest to like you know, a predator style. We need to stock. introduce one mountain lion in New Zealand and just see it what would happens. Be Sorry, the first four hundred pound mountain lion on the planet because these animals are everywhere and they don't understand. Not, not to deal with predators. Go back to the story, but how, <laughs> how fucking awesome would that be if we introduced one predator where it couldn't breed, but it was just like It'd be really see how fat it gets, and we have a GPS tracker and like maybe a GoPro on there so we could see all the kills. It actually, would be really because they, those animals have never been stocked. They'd be like, never. "Oh, look! Did you, you want to lick me?" <laughs> <laughs> well, that like. Oh, so no, they, I'm getting eaten. The yeah. sheep had no concept of like predator style stalking, right? Like they definitely understood human two foot going after him, trying to kill him with a bow style, but they didn't understand like hands and knees crawling through the brush, the whole deal. Right. So we were messing with them kind of the entire hunt. And when we were done killing all the stuff we wanted to, I, I bet uh, Chad and TJ, whichever one of you can get a hold of it and wrestle it to the ground, I'll buy you a fallow, a big a trophy fallow, which is, you know, it's. It's not good trophy, expensive, right? Yeah, yeah it's, not it, 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 it was it was a good it was a good prize for right. the winner, right? And I actually feel bad for uh, for Chad because he had to go first and he learned something in the process. But he was stalking these things, stalking these things, all on video, by the way, on our YouTube channel. It's fucking hilarious. So he's going. He actually gets to about maybe call it 50, 40, 50 yards, and they started kind of feeding through this little pinch point where he was going after him. They got it. They got ahead of him a little too much, so he got up and literally just started running full speed. And he's not a slow, not a slow guy by any means. Super athletic, and he's on a full blown sprint downhill. And this this ram is like on a on a standoff with him, and it's like trying to decide if he's going to go left or right. And at the last second, when Chad was ten feet away, that fucker bailed to the right and chad went flying missed it right oh dang so then tj was up the next day tj actually made a hell of a stock and got a hold of one and wrestled it to the ground and i had to buy him are you kidding me oh and this is all on film all on film i feel like there's a snake in the grass comment there but you're friends with them so i won't make that hey Uh, but hey it's okay all all welcome (laughs) I, i actually wouldn't say i'm like over, I'm not that good of friends with him. We text every once in a while because he wants to know about hunting. Yeah. But shit, I mean, as far as him and I go, we've only hung out that one time. The only reason I was hanging out with him is because of Chad. Chad and I go back. Yeah, those are both great athletes. Yeah. Dude, so he pinned it down and held it down for a he little bit? He picked it up and kind of put it down and then let it go. I said that was good enough. That is. He obviously didn't want to get hurt. If I was Dillashaw, I would use that for my pre-fight stuff, kind of how Khabib <laughs> used that yeah, right, wrestling bear. a bear. <laughs> I'd just be like, dude, I wrestled a sheep to the ground and stopped yeah. that bitch. I'm going to fuck you up in this octagon. It was awesome. <laughs> it was really cool. Really cool. Man, I want to do that Which would now. be interesting Let's do that. if you shanked a sheep. You call it a sheep shank. Sheep shank. A good old sheep shank. Can you hunt with a knife? 
I think what in New Zealand, you can do whatever you Dude, want. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, he could have stabbed. You can, hunt, you can hunt with Dude. the... Dude. I mean, with the... I'm in. Okay, twins. I'm in. I'll, I'll, I'll wrestle I'm it in. down. <laughs> I'll get it in a body triangle, and then you come up, just stab it through the heart, but not me. Sheep shank it. Sheep shank. Sheep shank. And I want to be there. a shirt that says sheep shank. also a fantastic... To, to film this. I'm going to hunt a sheep yes. with a spear. A fantastic <laughs> knot, too, by the way. A sheep shank? A sheep shank is a knot. It's no shit. It is a knot. Is that a sailor? Is that like a bowling... No, it's to take slack out of a rope and then oh, maintain tautness. Okay, yeah, Wait, no, 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 no. You're, gonna, you're gonna do. You're gonna <laughs> hey, do let's talk knots. Uh, let's I just wanna transition do, straight I over do a to a full blown knots. spear. I want to kill a sheep with a spear, dude. You're gonna have People to get in a lot stuff. better shape. Yeah, I'm, no, no he's offense. In a good shape. No, no. you guys know who Tim Wells is. Tim uh, Wells. Is that the guy that does the hog hunting with the? Spear? He's a badass bow hunter. Yeah, he does a bunch of spear stuff, yeah. a lot of blowgun stuff. The guy is fantastic. Definitely recommend watching his YouTube channel. He kills a lot of shit with a spear. I think like, I've a, a I think see this. He's got he's got a did he just a few years ago kill a grizzly? No, that was Who is uh, that dude? With a spear? Yes. It was Somebody a, killed a grizzly with a spear? With a spear? The, no. The under armor no, 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 no. There, there's a guy about? that that killed a grizzly with a spear. Shit, I don't know. He I he built it. He did a tree stand. So he's up above it in a tree stand and cruised down and he like literally sinks this fucking massive spear through it goes straight through the fucking animal and it runs off with it wow it's impressive it's a yeah. very impressive dude, bows and thing. spears are way more deadly than I, people think no dude I when you go, see the exit wound of a bow on it because a lot of people crazy. haven't seen that i mean they're especially hit them like through the shoulder it's yeah. like you know and the only reason like six inches people like the you know the humane or the vegans like your new cameraman um <laughs> like to understand when <laughs> something's like shot that. with a gun and it just falls over people are like oh it's dead right away not the case. It's just, you know, the shock value of, of the bullet going that fast, stopping that quickly within a, you know, two to three foot wide body is what actually turns it over. But it still has to go through the process of, you know, running out of air in its lungs or, you know, running, running out, out of blood, blood out whatever of it is. A bow is the same way. It just does, doesn't have the amount of energy Inertia, stopping. Yeah. During the process of being inside the animal, so it doesn't just tip them over, and but that's why I way hunt more deadly with a fifty cal and shoot I mean, animals just, in the I, face. <laughs> I, a, a while back ago, about six years ago, I did some slow motion video work for grizzly broadheads, and oh, yeah. we were we, they yeah. were shooting uh, hip bones of cows with these broadheads, and to see what even at, at fifty they were yards, dead, all right? Oh, yeah. No, no, like bones. Yeah, 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 we're, yeah. we're shooting skeletons. But to see what a broadhead does at 50 yeah. yards to a solid hip bone and it's, just going through that thing and breaking it in it's half, no it's joke. like, oh, it's no joke. bows are scary. Dude, you yeah. know, <laughs> bows are so deadly, man. It's just they're people amazing. don't people just don't see them tip right over, so they don't think it. But holy shit, What's they're deadly. Fucking crazy, too, when I was up at that ranch, crossbows. Oh, fuck. Dude, I saw the exit one of those crossbow, crossbow bolts, and I was like, nope. Nope, like yeah. I can't imagine getting shot by one. No, it, it was, dude. I don't even know how big it was, but that that thing was. There's a new. Ra it's called the Raven, something shit. I don't know. I'm not real this? well versed in crossbows, but there's this new Raven crossbow, which essentially will shoot 150 yards with no holdover, no anything. An arrow, Shut 150 up. yards flat. Are you fucking Nuts. serious? Yeah. It's crazy. That's a lot it's the of new power. like that's the your, new that's your thing new gym. That's so that's many people. Yeah, yeah. he's awesome. the crossbow guy. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's too lazy. I'm Jim to Kennedy shoot the other way. So you, Jim Kennedy. So to yeah, get Jim Kennedy to legally crossbow. hunt in the the lower forty or even you know all these all the North American states that are overseen by a state or federal fishing game, you have to have a medical reason to hunt with a crossbow. So yeah. like a shoulder replacement. No, he does. He has like whatever. Yeah. I was. We Fetus. can make something up with yeah, yeah. like you don't drink yeah. water and there's issues with that. Yeah. Well, no, it's you know. like there's there's also the Air Force veteran. Yeah. You, you get like you can get that claim too. You're yeah. Air Force vet. I, I am. Shit. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 So no big deal. Yeah. Right. So, so I got yeah. a guy who works for me who's Air Force vet. Thank you for your service, Jared. Yeah, yeah really good you. stuff, Jared. Appreciate it. I'm Great trying. stuff. I'm, tr I'm still really trying. good. Stuff. Shining example. Yeah. Trying to drink. What'd you do? Working your way through. Uh, I was what's <laughs> called a tech P. No, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Which I have no clue what that is. <laughs> it's a wait. Hold on. A tactical air control control, control party. person party <laughs> party. <laughs> We're a party. Got it. Yeah, they call in all the sense. bombs, you know. Nice. When when we get shot at and we're like, I'm scared, and then yeah. he just presses a button. And the guy who boom, works for me was a button. gunman on one of the big ass planes. That's fun. Yeah, Probably he's he's wondered. got some. In, yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it was. Yeah, yeah. I was trying he to see was a how inaccurate I could talk about your job. No, that's pretty much you got it. I mean, except it's not necessarily when you guys are scared. You're just you know sick of their shit. Well, that's why I was yeah. being facetious. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're tired of playing this game. Just. But yeah, why would you assault the PKM position where you can yeah. just drop a bomb on it? Yeah, no. be Apaches. Smart. Apaches yeah. are the best. 
Really? Oh yeah. I'm a Daps guy. Yeah. What is Daps? Mm. Daps are uh, Apaches. Let's see if I get this right. A H no no. Okay. <laughs> 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 they're, they're they're Blackhawks, but they're uh, built out with rockets. Blackhawks. There's an H in there. Yeah, there's hawks. Okay, got it. I was thinking the other well, thing. What's at the first. specifier on this? Actually. It's either MH60 or a- it could be AH60. I'm not sure. I thought it was attack hell because you have a UH60 yeah, and then yeah. you have an AH60. AH60 might daps be daps. Yeah, there you go. Identifier. Dave, are you texting or are you googling? No, that's him. No, AH64 is the Apache. Okay, we'll we'll Google this <laughs> after the show and get yeah, some fucking information on here. But so rolling back, man. Yeah. When, so you graduated 2010. Have you always been hunting? Always. Have you, you've always been hunting. Always. So you grew up hunting. Yeah. So gotcha. my my dad is from Northern California, mm-hmm. and he had an uncle. What part do you mind me asking? Uh, San Joaquin Valley. It's Thornton. Yeah. yeah. It's a small, small town. I know He's exactly where that born is. Born and raised in Thornton, California. My family still farms asparagus, almonds, Cause tomatoes. Because up towards like... Weed or Hollister, close, yeah, close, close, yeah. yeah. It's Stockton essentially. I mean, yeah. that's what you would call like the bigger area. But gotcha. he's from Thornton. It's about twenty five, thirty minutes outside of Stockton. Uh, so they still farm up there. But he had an uncle, um, Bill Sartini, who raised him into hunting. He was a really uh, impressive guy. Honestly, successful at a young age. He ended up getting cancer at thirty eight years old and passing away. But my dad was was my dad's dad and him were brothers bill and art sartini art sartini was my dad's dad they were brothers right bill was the younger brother art so my dad was closer in age to bill than than bill's kids um so he would take my dad hunting a lot and that's what actually got my dad into hunting so he started at a super young age in in utah nevada california um super young age and then when i was born the only thing i ever wanted to do was go hunting so any chance i got whether it be birthday or christmas or whatever i wanted him to take me hunting so i grew up you know i hunted when you're a kid growing up in Vegas with a really busy family, you kind of take advantage of what you have, which right. I think those high fence places in Texas and things like that serve an amazing purpose to get kids, to get adults I- introduced or have fun in hunting that don't necessarily have the time to, you know, well, it's a great, out. yeah, like learning training ground because I Fantastic. haven't been able to hunt through my yeah. whole life. I love to, I did it as a kid, but it was always like burned, but I didn't ever, you know, yeah. develop those skill sets. And so they, learning they catch a, a lot of flack for this high fence bullshit, but like, you know, take a take a. Uh, What's the main shit talk on that? You think? Because uh, the animals can't get away, which is a complete bullshit response. Has anybody ever been on a look, twenty thousand square foot high fence? Exactly. So, <laughs> I, so I've <laughs> I've hiked twenty thousand square acres. Twenty thousand miles. My favorite hunt on the planet is backcountry. Sorry, is back <laughs> backcountry elk hunting. Right. Yeah. Uh, one of yeah. my the best hunts I ever went on was a backcountry hunt, twelve miles in, four thousand feet of vertical gain to wilderness in New Mexico. Was right. The greatest hunt I've ever been on. Where was, was that at? Uh, secret. <laughs> I don't want to give away too. No, it was it was central in the state. There's a lot yeah. of really good elk hunting in in New Mexico. I wasn't even yeah, in the yeah. Gila, which is you know quote unquote yeah. the, the prime of New Mexico. Right. Wasn't even close to the Gila. Right. Um, I was just in the central of the state, hiked in, but we hunted these bulls, and I, I I'm no bullshit. Middle of the rut, we never left a three mile by three mile square, and we were in the same bulls all day every day. So what's different in that? Than hunting a twenty thousand acre yeah. high fence ranch, there's there's really no difference. Yeah, there's the one the one thing that people can talk about is, and in a controlled environment like a high fence, you can grow bigger animals. So if some guy's coming up to you and saying, you know, I shot a four hundred forty inch bull elk, but he yeah, was high but fence, I think that's, that's right. bullshit. That's totally like, but I'm the first person. Like when someone walks in, my stag was a three ninety seven SCI. Yeah. When someone's like, wow, New Zealand, I'd be like, Texas high fence. Yeah. Like, I have no problem admitting that. It was just a beautiful animal. My wife wanted it in the fireplace. So I was like, Roger that. You yeah. know, so. But and as you should, you shouldn't have an issue with that. That's that's people's ego, you know, because the one thing nobody's telling you about New Mex- or about uh, New Zealand is what I just told you. It's all high, fen- all high fence down there. Right. All those stags are high fenced. The only place that has free range stag is South America. It's the only place that has free range I stag. I have no clue. Yeah. So, I, I mean,. People, people, their egos get in the way of the size of animal. This is like, there's an undercurrent in hunting where, which really draws the line between like a high fence or free range is, is essentially based on the size of the animal. Yeah, like that's that undercurrent where yeah. people try to, you know, puff their chest out and say, I shot a 450 inch bull elk. Yeah, but it was fucking high fence. So yeah. it doesn't really matter. You know, when you shoot a free range, 450 inch world record, that's badass. I see that though. I see that as like that conversation has been going on forever, right? Forever. Like that's. 
that's just like hunting in general. I remember, you know, my grandparents, like I remember my grandpa making fun of my dad because he wanted to, you know, he was looking for a big bull. Mm -hmm. And my grandpa's like, man, just like the cows are better eating. Just, yeah. you know, kill the cows, bring it home. Like, I don't know why you're running around in the mountains for fucking two weeks yeah. trying to kill a bull. Like how many cows do you see or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And like, I remember like the guys that are, Food hunters are just putting meat on the table. There's those guys getting out it there. done as, as yeah. efficiently and as fast and, and as possible. And just like, hey, yeah. you know. Uh, so I, I mean, I've heard that. I, w I went up to uh, British Columbia earlier in the year, and it was a 10 day moose hunt. And but I made a promise to myself, like, hey, I'm going to kill a moose up here. Like, if it has horns, I'm going to kill a moose. I'm going to process every last piece of it, and. I didn't pass one opportunity. The only opportunity that I had was for a bull at day nine and it's horns were fucking tiny, but man, I'll tell you what, that is the best the jerky, jerky was delicious. That is the yeah. best jerky and it is the best meat we've had like moose lasagna and moose pizza, moose, moose, moose for yeah. like awesome. weeks on end. Man, I want some moose pizza. And it was a great yeah. hunt, man. It was a great hunt. So it's like the, my buddy that killed a moose three days before me, it's a Boone and Crockett, like, record bull. It's not like he was hunting harder than me. It was sheer luck. 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 So Sheer luck. You're, you're, you're touching on a lot of, like, what our company, my company, is capitalizing on, right? There's been these huge shifts in the hunting world where it started as, like, this family heritage. You go hunting with your family. You, you kill stuff. You put meat on the, on the table. It's, it's this whole experience. Well, then it got into, I'm a better hunter than you because I kill big stuff and you just kill little stuff. Right. And people really focused on that, which was interesting because you're kind of, you're, you're self-policing. There's no such thing as a professional hunter. I, like this, this day and age when people call themselves a professional hunter, it's laughable. There's no such thing, right? right. Hunting, hiker. There's a reason why hunting doesn't have the scale of professional and, and not right. professional. It's, it's for everyone. Everyone can do it. It's the best experience on the planet that anybody could do. And it's there for a reason. I mean, it goes back to the most primal feelings in a human, in, in a human body is to go kill meat, put it on the table, right? Like we've been doing it since the beginning of time. It's in everyone. Yeah. So these, this undercurrent of like, I'm better than you. I'm professional because i kill big animals it's total bullshit well that actually did catch a lot of uh, fire because there was people one who had a lot of money who would buy tags that would afford right. them the opportunity at right. these you know world-class animals that not everybody going through the draw or, or lottery system could have the chance at so it was kind of inflated but a lot of that information of how they were killing these animals and how they were getting the tags it wasn't out there for the general public well then it started to show that like you know some of these tags that people are buying are three hundred thousand dollars. Like there was a banquet yeah. in, in oh, Reno this yeah. last weekend, and there was multiple tags that went for two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars. Yep, it's a money game, man. Yeah, and it affords you the chance at a giant animal. That's just the reality of the situation, right? Where a guy like me would have to wait twenty to and thirty years to draw that tag in a lottery. They just get to go buy it. Right. But now they're a better hunter because they've killed a, you know, a. 200 inch bighorn sheep and i haven't yeah, killed one at all guys have other like, people stalk them and then call them and they just roll that's exactly in. what these people do <laughs> it's exactly like they literally have the air force out there looking for these fucking animals yeah and then it's and, like okay here it is yeah. and the guy just rolls the guy like, rolls I'm into like, town like, I flies have, his own plane into yeah. town and then yes. goes. i don't really have a problem with that honestly i think it's weird when people start getting hyper competitive of that because like yeah it's always interesting it's like whose kid's cuter i feel like that's a story in texas which i don't show Minor off a lot of animals Huh? Mine are cutest. Yeah, cute. you know, I, I got a pretty cute can, one. I can, <laughs> I can compete with you on that one. Yeah, yours are pretty cute. I don't have kids, so, um, yeah. Anyways, but yeah, like, uh, you know, when you show someone an animal and they try to one up you and all of that, yeah. and like, you know, I I do a decent amount of taxidermy from animals I kill, but I love that because it's kind of like a history and it reminds me of the hunt and I'm like, oh shit, this is one. You know, my wife shot this orcs yeah. off my back. Oh, this is the red stag I took here. This is the fallow. It's just it's fun and, and for sure. And, and there's a dark sense of. Um, enjoyment when i'm eating axis chili and i can look at the animal i just no question I, i'm eating and I, look I, i'm right there with you i don't want to <laughs> come off the wrong way you know like i don't want to come off like i'm against any of it i'm not i actually do support that style of hunting too because it serves a purpose yeah, of course all that is. money goes back to conservation, conservation. for wonderful. that specific animal. that's why i was just right. saying it's that. amazing right? right but you can't call yourself you can't get <laughs> hyper competitive on you're a better hunter than me because you have a big you have a 200 inch you know state record bighorn sheep and i don't have one at all that's where it gets 
interesting with this like competition and in, in hunting. It gets you really to know where we can do com- buck hunter HD. I love that. I have one in my office out in the warehouse. <laughs> what about Best this? Thing we I have. have a great business plan. If you want to go into business with me, let's high fence in Texas about twenty thousand acres. Let's get the world's worst criminals. We'll put them on there, and you can buy human tags. All the money, like a million dollars, goes either back into conservation fences, or it goes. No, we can build a high. That's Trump. He'll build a big fence. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, or we go all to St. Jude's uh, ch- Charity Hospital to save ca- kids with cancer. Why don't we do that? That'd be awesome. I, I think mean, it'd be fantastic. I think we should. I think we. <laughs> you know how motivated, more motivated South I'd be in Africa. business. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. pulling that million dollar tag. <laughs> Let's and, go. Oh, I, man, I, we get I, mean, kill I think one. you could do that in South Africa. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you can do pretty much anything you want. I feel like someone's done that at some point, probably. Did you just make a a movie? There's a movie about to back it up. Anytime anybody wants South African is a a South African is a relatively established and functioning government. And guess what? You can't do just anything you want in the United States. You go to Panama or South Africa. That's not true. Yes, it is. That's absolutely not true. Yes, the loop of doom that had to be done in South Africa because the U.S. would not allow. That's on one thing that you're referencing. He references like, oh yeah, we're just going to south africa to do anything that we want because there's no law the south it's like total fucking south anarchy. africa was Who where knows? that guy started no that was that was zambia i'm sorry the guy that stood that it sounds right to me because i'm the fighting not midgets overly educated, educated, lion. that yeah. was in zambia Shit. that's right somebody saying. throws out it's legal it's in south very africa. specific okay. to right. the country yeah. that you go to based on what law you want to break it's a very specific industry. so zambia well, I mean, depending on how you want to shoot things, because South Africa, you can't get your weapons weapons in there. You can't just, like, go buy So you shit. want to go to a country that if you show up with a pallet of cash. If you show up with a pallet of cash. You're like, hey. You need to go to a Russian or former Russian. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, you know, they're Eastern like, Bloc. Yeah, they're like. You show up with a pallet of cash. Sorry, you can get yeah, a lot of shit done. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You could have that land. I want to. I want to drop a tactical nuke. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's go to Siberia. How much cash you got? I like you know it. What it I mean? might cost, cost a little yeah, pretty penny. I, I want to put on my shades. I want to catch a sun suntan. You know? That would be it. awesome. Why is yeah. my face melting off? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, there anyway, you go. I didn't want to derail the time. Cash. Of the hey, he just, he just key. says That is the key to everything. About crazy shit where you got to kind of like, you got to bring him back. Panama and South way. Africa. That's where you go. Panama? No, yeah. it's Panama. Panama. I Panama, no. I mean, yes. hey, so, really good question, though. You're very convincing. You've probably hunted around the world, right? I have, yeah. yeah. Like, coolest place to hunt, like, just terrain-wise that you've been? Honestly, like, I'm an American through and through. Seriously? I love this place. I love yeah. everything about the U.S. I mean, not everything. I like what I am tied to in mm-hmm. the U.S., right? Got it. Um, but the hunting here is, we're, we're one of the only... Besides Canada, because they took a page out of our book that right. has a federal oversight of our fish and wildlife, which right. is oh, really? which is awesome. You know, it's it the way it's run, the how much data and and analytics actually provide to the management of these of these animals is is awesome. And it, you know, for multiple different reasons, it makes you feel a part of the success of these animals. Right? Teddy Roosevelt is the one that put all yeah. this pioneer federal, man. Yeah, he's the one that that put all this together and you know, allowed this oversight of management of animals. And back then, uh, white-tailed deer were less than a million. Buffalo were, like, nearly It was 800, I think, they got down to. 800,000 white tail. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Bu- Buffalo. Bison. Yeah, bison. Yeah, bison. Yeah. It was, like, 800. Up, up, yeah. And there was, like, 50 million before Dude, that. white tail was Ooh. less than a million. I mean, think about oh. that. Why you go anywhere in the yeah. on the planet right now, you can find I a, think or, there's, or U.S, you can seriously. find a white tail. Yeah. I think anywhere there's a million want. white tail in my community because yes, I have easily. to dodge them with Literally, my vehicle yeah, every yeah. And that's second. all Teddy Roosevelt. That's how we kind of put this whole process together. Canada did a similar, different but similar, where they actually are, you know, overseen by the, the federal government. But, like, take South Africa, for example, or anywhere in Africa. These guys own these big swaths of land, and there's no federal oversight. That's why there's such a big poaching problem is because the right. poachers, the only way the poachers are getting in trouble is when the, the land owner and protector of his animals catches them. That's the only way they get in trouble. It's the only way they get shot at, whatever. So a lot of Africa gets a lot of flack for people shooting elephants and lions, right? That, whoever wants to go shoot that, that's awesome. They're a wild animal. They were, have, were hunted back in the day. They're still hunted now. There's a reason why they should be hunted hunted still i mean that's better for the herd and the reason why it's essentially better or, or you know exceptionally better for the herd right now is say a guy sells an uh, uh, elephant tag for $150,000 that's $150,000 now that he gets to take in provide you know policing or oversight of his ranch right. by by local 
you know. Well, they usually donate all the the meat to the local villages. You're actually not like allowed that. to take any meat out of Africa yeah. in a lot of the places because it has to go to the villages, which is awesome. That's yeah. great. And they use that money to protect. You kill one elephant to protect 150, 250 other elephants with that one tag that he sold. Right? right. He gets to have oversight of his ranch, security on his ranch. And that's how he does it. That, that's how you have to do it over there. We'll kill Jared so we can protect ourselves. I, but I think what? that's just a common <laughs> hypocritical conversation. That's just like that's that, that is every conversation in social media in America yes. right now. Right. That's like unless you're vegan, like an actual 100 percent practicing fucking vegan. Like you have no room to talk about hunting in any capacity whatsoever. Fully like you agree. can completely go fuck yourself like fuck straight off look even if you're wearing leather boots you have nothing to say about exactly exactly so it's like nothing and how many people are a hundred percent practicing vegans that are wearing like nothing but fucking you know cotton fiber and quite literally reliant on zero animal products whatsoever how many people in america statistically speaking Let's just throw out a fucking guess. How many I, people I are there? Think, I don't think you could. Less than one percent. A way, yeah, I, I, way I, less than one percent. I don't even think it's has possible because you're not going to be able to drive a car. It's, it's a hundred. You got leather seats in your car. A thousandth of a percent. He doesn't okay. have a car. You got exactly. leather belts. I well, love but, this but guy. I think, but I think this, okay. even though he's vegan, the thing here is it's when people are 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 di- talking down to hunting because I've always made that joke. It's like why hunt when you can just buy it in the store? Those guys are fucking idiots, right? They're dumb. But I think if people practice vegan for their own likeness and whatever they want to do that's great but yes when i've had vegans attack me for being a hunter i'm like you ain't fucking you know sally fuck shit over there (laughs) in a perfect world man because when your ass gets drunk Mm -hmm. you go to fucking mcdonald's and eat the worst shit processed with some bacon on there and that stuff comes from the worst pig farms you've ever seen dude like which is the worst thing for the environment the the worst worst. worst thing worse than the car industry and a lot of those I mean, just to be fair, a lot of those are my personal troll pages that I've established to troll you. Oh, perfect. Those are, <laughs> those... Meat is murder, dog. <laughs> it is. And it's also what sustains my uh, you know, body so I can live. It, I, I just like continuing to point these things out to this, this incredibly hypocritical nation. Yes, where I mean, it's all like, that's they yeah. they want to say, you know, hunting is cruel. It's like, hey, man, have you ever. Bothered seen a learning. fucking documentary on how animals die in the wild like yeah. just just like google it once just like google it once you can you, there's a, there's like a whole channel built around like established fucking video footage and you can well, like look at things and decide for yourself but that's but, not but that's not anything so my analogy when it comes to hunting is this would I want to be out at a bar drinking whiskey with you guys, and then I just get shot in the fucking head? The last memory I have was awesome. I was with my best friends, having <laughs> yeah, a great time. That's actually a good one. Or do I want to be in a prison, and then I'm getting escorted yeah. down the fucking thing to have an ethical death? Meanwhile, yeah. No, dude. I sat in the fucking prison then, my whole life. And like, meanwhile, you're hearing everybody yeah. get yeah. killed. Yeah. yeah. Right. With right. A, within <laughs> you, there's like a bag of Or, or like I'm bag stacked on, on top head. of Jared, butt naked, like, yeah. you know, trying to eat food out of Not the a freaking pig yeah. farm. Hey, I, yeah, no, that part's we can, good we can part. revisit like, it's, it's this so, later. It's so moronic to me that people have this, like, efficacy towards how much hunt, you know, whatever. It, like, they, they eat meat, but then they're anti-hunting. I'm like, you're an they're, idiot, dude. Bambi was just chilling with her family, loving their life, and I put a fucking arrow through its heart. It died in like thirty seconds. Didn't even thought it probably got stung by a bee. Yeah. Get over it. Fully agree. Yeah, and yeah. there's a lot of there's Guess a what? lot Nature of Nature is fucking metal. It's hard. shitty. It's yeah. fucking the world is savage. There's Look, criminals. There's pieces of shit. The out world there. is savage. The one the, thing right. everything on this planet does is kill. It's literally right. it's the one Circle. common denominator of every single thing on this planet. Even trees, right? You take big pine trees. They choke out everything below them as they're growing. They kill literally everything. So everything on this planet kills. It's the one common denominator, right? It's the one thing. You see, Simba, the circle of life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's it. you know, killing is, it's uh, <laughs> killing, the, the definition of killing, it's actually a pretty wide term because of it, it's, yeah, but w- people, which way was it killed? How was it killed? What is the example of the killing that happened? And free range hunting or high fence hunting for that matter, these animals living a great life. They're not on all this crazy shit, hormones and, and medicine and all this. They're not listening to their buddies going down this no. fucking hacking but, but, line but the but whole time. But even in that, right, killed. I agree. And this is where I fucking go on a tangent here and I haven't smoked weed, I promise. I know it's legal here in Vegas, yeah. but I'm sober as a Joe right now. 
but like how do you value one organism's life more than, more than another? The other. So is do we justify that by a cognitive function that you have a biased opinion on as a human? So you slaughtering a fly, a mosquito, that's content. But a bunny rabbit, because you fucking think it's cute because you've been conditioned yeah, through fucking society sure. and culture to think that it's cute. Yeah. What about bacteria when you use fucking hand sanitizer? Like You kill it like crazy. Like, dude, I'm like, you guys are fucking idiots. It's just because the size and scale of an animal is somewhat relevant to your ethical and moral compass. Not, You're a fucking moron, eyes. dude. Look at you like this. We all die. <laughs> yeah. We're well, all born a, fucking terminal. We're all going to fucking fade away into energy. And that's, that's why the term, the term you know, so killing is, is a lot wider than the, the general definition of it, right? I mean, it's... Yeah, it's a, it's a much bigger thing than people want to give it, uh, you know, the and, and the crazy for, thing, right? To be even more defensive of like the, the most hunters I know is that they're the most like ethical, compassionate people towards animals. Like I don't, I'm kind of a pussy these days. I don't even really like killing. Like, but when I I do it because I love it, I love providing for my family, and I yeah. think it's a great, um, you know, way to be have a relationship with the the animal yeah. and the food that you're eating. But it's like, and I'll have I'll have this argument shots. until I'm blue in the face. Yeah. It is best for the animal, and like, I take a lot of pride in being a hunter and knowing that I'm sustaining this animal's quality of life, the herd's quality of life, the population and growing population of these animals in other states. It is a proven scientific statistical fact that hunting helps these animals grow and be sustained. It's a, it's a fact, and I'll argue it all day long. I, don't, I mean, clearly you guys don't want to get into the numbers and bullshit of it, but, I mean, it's it's a proven fact. And I take a lot of pride in, you know, taking the responsibility of, of helping that. And not oh, to yeah. mention, this is a whole other tangent we can go on, but, like, a non-resident hunting license. When you buy a non-resident hunting license Ooh. in these other states, right? Spicy. Really expensive. Really expensive. Yep. That non-resident hunting license is what funds the state... Fish and Wildlife, the the state parks, mm -hmm. the the state public like Red Rock here in town, right? Wait, do you mean that there has to be some form of compensation for people that work for the government, like they like tax or, or or get money yeah. through yeah. other you mean programs? Like, yeah, hikers that hike on trails and they go out and park in parking lots. And, yep, yeah, yeah. or like a go fishing and, license yes. to help sustain like stuff like that. that yeah. like, where does all the money come from? Non-resident hunting huh. licenses. <laughs> that's where it comes from. <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah. super interesting. That's where it comes from. So like. Red Rock here in town, these these rock climbers, they get to go up there for free. Five dollar pass to go through the gates. What yeah. the fuck is five dollars gonna do for for all this shit we have going on? A non resident hunting license in Nevada is hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty bucks. Bro, in you Texas times, it's like three fifty. Yeah. Oops. Well you times that we have a lottery system, so you have way more yeah. s demand than supply. So we have hundred thousand applications coming in, times that by the amount of, uh, of dollars that's actually a three to one match by the government another teddy roosevelt thing so there's oh. a three to one match wow so say you raise a million bucks it's actually four million bucks because you have the million three to one match three million four million bucks total to fund you know rock climbers parking at red rock national park that's i did not know that well, yeah. this one, one has been very very educational i know you're and fucking I, I i enjoy well, it well, good hunting is uh, hunt, i take a lot of pride in in uh explaining that hunting isn't as redneck as some people might think well that, that there yeah we'll go on that real quick it's a lot of the stigma i think is like people think hunting and they hear like oh damn earl and they're in the back of the truck fucking shooting with their 30 out six i'm like yeah does that exist somewhere probably but like most hunting and like the experience of hunting when you're going out and tracking and stalking the animal in which you can go out in 10 days and probably not even see one fucking moose until the ninth day yep like it's an experience it's the outdoors it's conditioning to understand the environment mm -hmm. how ecosystems work instead of putting Holy. your face into a fucking blue screen playing video games your whole goddamn life like go Holy. out experience the world a little bit understand yeah. that we live in such a fragile fucking ecosystem and enjoy it yeah because the asteroid's gonna hit us all and kill us i mean really <laughs> yeah. negative at all this you got reason. it you got it well yeah no this was great there was a lot of good you know? information put out yeah so where, where do they where do they find what like where do they find what i want to say i already know where they go so go on the website go hunt exactly the right. internet's a wonderful place it's, it's a, very it's easy a to find a wonderful place but do you guys put out anything else on like youtube yeah and, we have a youtube channel a lot of tons of good uh you know, we're all about providing the best light of hunting with our videos. Right. So we, we really try to show, you know, the experience and what it really is because not a lot of not a lot of people are, you know, fortunate or blessed enough to be involved in hunting and don't know anything about it and want to know know more about it. So we try to show like the entire aspect of hunting as a whole and what it what it takes and what it is. So a lot of our video content on YouTube is is that. Um then we have Instagram and 
all that. Is that all in your go hunt? Yeah, all in your go hunt. Well, Lorenzo, this was freaking great. Thank you, man. Yeah, we got to get you back because you have such an interesting family and all things. Yeah, sorry. And and again, I don't want to come off. I didn't mean to come off. You know weird in the beginning but it's just weird. look i'm fully aware of of a lot of a lot of things come from you know people's situations and i'm very proud of who my family is so i don't mind saying who it is and i also understand that it kind of puts you in a seat that you know not a lot of people have and i, well, and I, I did, fully respect i didn't know that was your background on. even your family so yeah <laughs> i can tell you baker probably knew that but it's not like we were no i just that. i don't know how it came off in the beginning but no, 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 no hopefully no, not too bad great well, yeah, it was great well, thank you for taking great the time. show yeah, it was great. Of course.